Is that all there is really when it comes to anti-aging skincare? Sunscreen, retinoids, maybe an antioxidant serum, don't smoke, don't drink, eat a healthy balanced diet, get seven to nine hours of sleep every night, manage your stress, stay active. Is that really it? Surely there's something else out there, something coming. There must be hope that we can reverse aging even more aggressively. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into the future of anti-aging skincare. Like what is on the microscope slide, if you will, at the current moment? What is actively being investigated for the future of anti-aging skincare? What are buzzwords that are already getting thrown around despite how primitive the research actually is? We're gonna be doing a deep dive into the future of skincare, from cellular regeneration, gene editing, and we're gonna importantly be touching on the ethical implications of some of this fancy science. When we think about aging skin, usually what comes to mind are wrinkles, sagging, discoloration, stuff that you see with your eyes, obviously. That's just the surface, however. True skin aging, it's a cellular story. It starts in the cell. Every single day, our skin is met with all sorts of environmental aggressors. UV rays, pollution, tons of oxidative stress, DNA damage, breakdown of collagen and elastin. There's a lot of talk about the hallmarks of aging at the cellular level, genomic instability, telomere shortening, mitochondrial dysfunction, and cellular senescence. Maybe these are terms you have encountered yourself, whether it be from a podcaster talking about longevity or skincare products, devices, making all sorts of claims. These hallmarks of skin aging directly impact how our skin looks and importantly how it performs because as a reminder, it's an organ system and it has a job to do. It needs to protect you from the outside world and keep hydration in and all of those good things so that we don't fall apart. And while it's easy to chalk everything up to um, genetics, skin aging isn't just about having bad genes or merely the amount of time you're on the planet. It's influenced by diet, lifestyle, sun exposure, and stress, which as a reminder, check out my recent video on how stress impacts your skin. We do a deep dive into the science of what is going on when you are freaking out. Because aging is both genetic and environmental, that means to a certain extent, it's modifiable. There there's some things that you can do to support healthy aging. What exactly is the future of anti-aging skincare? Questions that are being addressed in the lab that might one day make their way into a face cream or an injectable are looking at a tool called CRISPR for gene editing. Basically, this might allow for us to edit genes that influence collagen loss, inflammation, and pigmentation. We're talking personalized anti-aging therapies based on your unique DNA. Then you've probably heard a lot of buzz around stem cells and exosomes. And I have videos on my channel explaining what exactly are exosomes, how do stem cells work, do they even work in skincare? As I pointed out in those videos, however, stem cell therapy and exosomes are an area of active and ongoing research with regards to total body health, a variety of different medical conditions, diseases, and skin health. Specifically, looking at their potential for regenerating the skin, not just repairing, but regenerating essentially renewing from within. And you cannot escape AI these days, artificial intelligence. Check out my recent video on should you use an AI skincare routine? Should you entertain ChatGPT to make your skincare selections? Your eyes will be opened into its limitations. Analyzing skin at a microscopic level and building skincare routines with ingredients that are tailored to you and your biology, in theory, that is where this is headed. We are basically embarking on a frontier of personalized skincare, hyper customized, individualized skincare based on your genetic makeup. I mean, we all know the topicals at the moment that are evidence-based to work. And if you're wondering what those are, check out my video on my top five evidence-based anti-aging skincare ingredients that actually work. But what is the future? Where is science looking to push the envelope even further? Let me know in the comments, have you heard the term C Analytics or xenomorphics. Senescent cells are otherwise known as zombie cells. These are cells that stop dividing. They stop dividing, but they refuse to die. So they're just kind of hanging out there. They cause a lot of inflammation. They're sort of a nuisance and they're thought to contribute to accelerating the aging process. Xenolytics are drugs that aim to clear them up, whereas xenomorphics are drugs that essentially suppress them. Both of these approaches aim to restore more youthful cellular function. I already know you guys have heard a lot of buzz around NA 
NAD. And I even have a video here on should you be using NAD in your skincare? Definitely check that out because we go over the pluses and minuses, the limitations, and where the science really stands. What the heck is NAD? It's a molecule that essentially fuels cellular energy. And with age, this molecule declines. So there's a lot of talk around boosting NAD to improve skin aging and total body aging. So a lot of the science is aimed at seeing how we can improve NAD levels as it may help reverse the signs of aging. Then there's this whole category of epigenetics. Basically you have DNA and then you have all of this stuff on top of it that kind of controls essentially its accessibility. That's a very, very generic way to describe it. But epigenetic modulators are another avenue of anti-aging therapeutics of interest in research development. Basically the goal of these therapies is to influence how genes are expressed without actually altering the DNA itself. But wait, if all of that sounds too cool, too exciting, just calm down, all right? Cool your jets because it's one thing to look at cells in a dish to get excited about research at the bench. But when it comes to delivering therapeutics to the skin, that's the question, delivery. How do you get these things into the skin effectively? How do you get them to go into the right compartments in the skin to do what they need to do to have the intended effect? And how do you make sure there aren't off target biological effects? This is a real concern that the science is not at that point yet to say, yeah, applying exosomes, applying gene editing or whatever onto the skin, it's going to get exactly where it needs to go. And it's not going to negatively impact any bystander cells. It's not going to turn on programs and already problematic cells to make them even more problematic or accelerate their alteration into frank cancer potentially. But in an ideal world in the future, we will have delivery systems that allow these ingredients to get exactly where they need to go, take out the guesswork, basically precision skincare down to the molecular level. As I emphasize in as many videos as possible, when it comes to anti-aging skincare, skincare products, they play a minor supporting role. It is all about your lifestyle habits and nutrition is huge. Poor nutrition does not bode well for your aging at all. No matter how high tech, how fancy, how sophisticated, sciencey your skincare gets, if you don't have the lifestyle factors in place, it's a wash. You guys think that the skincare industry is wild, constantly pumping out products left and right. Huge, right? Well, um, the dietary supplement industry is another big avenue of like, yeah, let's, let's talk supplements for anti-aging. And this is another area where you are getting the interest in nutraceuticals to slow down the aging process, to help with our lo longevity, and to have an anti-aging effect for our skin, improve wrinkles. You already know about collagen peptides. And if you don't check out some of my videos on them, I do a deep dive into how they work and how they're different from just eating jello. Different antioxidants. People on the internet are already insisting that taking these supplements do all of these wonders for your body, for your skin, despite how primitive, how early the research is on these. In other words, what's the best dose, the best route, the best formulation? Is it even absorbed? Does it even make it to where it needs? to go? Are there adverse effects of taking this? Is there a certain demographic that should avoid it? Questions that need to be addressed that are not, but does not stop a ingredient of interest from making its way into dietary supplements. Hopefully in the future one day, we will live in a world where you can get customized nutritional advice to help support healthy aging. Because when it comes to diet, I do believe that there is a lot of variation from person to person, group to group, as far as how different diets intakes can influence their overall health and some of their baseline needs, not to mention what it is that you're doing given life stages and the types of foods that really support optimal health. We can't ignore sleep. Um, lots of people are hyper-focused on optimizing their sleep schedule because good sleep allows our body to heal, to recover, to repair damage to our skin cells, to our body cells, to fight off inflammation, oxidative stress. And when we don't have adequate restful sleep, all of those renewal processes start to suffer and it can negatively impact the quality of our skin, our skin health. Right now though, we give a lot of generic advice with regards to sleep and how many hours you should go to sleep. Most people think that you should go to bed in the evening and wake up early in the morning, but maybe there are some people whose biology does better with staying up later and sleeping in. Like, is that something that for some people ends up being better suited to their chronotype as it's called? And 
And does that end up boding well for their overall health in the long run? Like forcing someone to go to bed early and wake up early, they might not just be of the makeup to unwind like that and to, to go to sleep. And as a result, there is some evidence that people who are built like that, when they try and follow the typical recommendations, the typical need, I should say, of going to bed early and waking up early, they really suffer. They have more car crashes. They have more uh, mood disorders, all sorts of health problems likely related to just chronically being just a touch behind in your sleep, trying to catch up with everybody else. Where it stands now, however, keep in mind that things like exosomes, PDRN, gene editing, stem cells, these are all areas of active and ongoing research, but the research is nowhere near ready to say, okay, this face cream, yeah, it's going to have this beneficial effect. For the most part, skincare brands are just capitalizing on high search volumes, early research to convince their customers that they are offering something specific, something unique, something science-backed that is cutting edge and advanced, but it's really not quite there yet. And you may just be spending more money on something that at the end of the day, at best is moisturizing the skin and at worst has just degraded in that bottle. As it stands now and likely into the future, stick to the basics of a mild cleanser, a moisturizer, and of course, prioritize, prioritize, prioritize sun protection. If you are so motivated and if it's right for you, a topical retinoid remains one of the most evidence-based ingredients for supporting healthy skin aging, for improving collagen production to minimize wrinkles and the visible signs of skin aging. Even in this high-tech, cutting-edge world, the basics still reign supreme despite all of the high-tech innovations that allegedly are going on. Last but not least, I want to touch on the sort of ethical implications. Like how far is too far? Just because we can, should we? That's an important question to ask whenever any new technology comes about, is developed. Like should we be editing our genes to stay youthful? Should we attempt with science to reverse aging completely? Like completely do away with hair graying? It does kind of create a very homogenous appearing society, one would imagine. Is beauty enhancement worth biological modification? And importantly, what is all of this going to cost? Is the average person going to be able to afford this? Or is this just going to become another one of those keeping up with the Joneses type of things? We might just be approaching a future as dystopian as it sounds where having old skin, wrinkles, some dark spots, gray hair is a choice. I don't know. Sounds a little bit too freaky to me. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, science is unlocking a new era of all all sorts of exciting innovations. Only time will tell where these things go. But at the end of the day, sunscreen, basic skincare routine of cleansing and moisturizing, consider a topical retinoid and watch your lifestyle habits. Don't drink excessively. Don't smoke. Get good sleep. Eat a balanced diet. The boring stuff. It's evidence based. It works and it can help tremendously. I hope you guys found this video informative. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.